Welcome to Believers in Christ Fellowship's online church service. We are glad you're here. Please open your Bible and we will be live in a few minutes. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Believers in Christ Fellowship and Made Free Church online uh, church service. Uh, hope you all are having a good morning. I know I am. And, uh, you know, today, you know, we're going to uh, explore a powerful, uplifting passage from the book of Revelation, specifically Revelation 14, verses 6 through 13. It's a passage that reveals the heart of the gospel and offers us true hope in the future. So I do have a few announcements to make, guys. Um, I do have um, a few books that are out there on Amazon. Go check them out. One of them is called Reformation Revived. Uh, it's about the Reformation. I love the Reformation. And no, I'm not a Calvinist or a Reform guy. I just love the Reformation. Also, there's one about the Apostle John. It's a little mini book. Uh, I mean, Apostle Paul, it's a little mini book. And also, I have one about the Apostle John. And I just finished another one called Recovery and Redemption. It's a uh, it's a 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous through a biblical lens. And it it it, it it's it's through the lens of a 12 step program and the the, the biblical lens. So that, I, I'm proofreading that and that's going to be up probably in the next few days on Amazon. So guys, uh, yeah, just uh, uh, go out and get those books. They're amazing books. Uh, all your money is funds our uh, our street church. We go out and feed the homeless. We haven't done that in a while. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just one of those things, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's people come and go and, and stuff. So uh, you, if you guys could pray for us on that, that would be great because we need funding uh, to do that and, you know, stuff like that. So, and we haven't gotten funding. We, we, we haven't got, you know, funding for it yet. So uh please guys um you know pray for us for that you know the, the, the lord just you know anyway just pray for that so again we're going to be in open up your bibles because we're going to be in revelation 14 verses 16 through 13 okay so all right well, let's pray heavenly father thank you for your word thank you for this time and thank you for this opportunity lord that we get to spend with you Lord, get this lowly preacher out of the way and let your word go forward. We love you. We worship you and we praise you. Lord, minister to our hearts and souls today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, guys. So to, uh, we're going to read together today's scripture, uh, which is um, Revelation 14, 6 through 13. It says this, Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and every tribe and every language and, and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of judgment has come and worship him who made the heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water. Another angel, a second, followed saying, fallen, fallen Babylon the great. She who has made all the nation drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. And a third angel, another angel, a third following them said, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and its image receives the mark on his forehead or on his hand. He also drinks the wine of the wrath of the wine of God's wrath poured poured full strength into the cup of his anger and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever and they will find no rest day and night these worshipers of the beast and its image and whoever receives the mark of his name here is a call for endurance of the saints those who keep the commandments of god and their 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 faith in Jesus. And I heard a loud voice saying, Write this, blessed are the dead who die in the in the Lord, whom uh from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they rest, they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. So 
you know, and in the heart of the book of Revelation is nestled, it's, you know, amidst its vision of cosmic conflict and the divine judgment. We find a beacon of hope that, that shines brightly, right? A message so profound that it, it, it is described as the eternal gospel. Right, Revelation 14, uh, verses 6 and 7, unveils this message, reminding us of the timeless and universal nature of the gospel. Right? It says, Then I saw uh, 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 an angel flying directly overhead with the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, every tribe, and every language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made the heaven and earth and sea and the springs of water. You know, at, at first and foremost, you know, let us grab the, the inclusiveness of this proclamation, right? It, it is not confined to a particular time, place or group of people. The angel carries the gospel to those who dwell on the earth encompassing every corner of our world, right? It's a message for every nation, every tribe and language and people. This inclusivity underscores the crucial aspect of God's character, right? He desires for all to come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved in 1 Timothy 2, 4, right? That the central theme of this angelic proclamation is a call to fear God and give him glory. Right in the in the midst of the chaos and turmoil portrayed in Revelation, this call stands as a reminder of God's sovereignty over all creation. It, it invites us to recognize and reverence the One who is the source of all life and existence. Right, it, the, the call to fear God is not about trembling in terror, but rather acknowledging His Majesty, His wisdom, and His goodness. Right, it's an invitation to awe and reverence in response to the creator of the universe, right? And the proclamation also speaks of an hour of judgment, right? <laughs> this phrase can invoke in, uh, fear and anxiety, but it's, it's essential to understand the nature of this judgment, right? It, it's, it's not a vengeful or an arbitrary judgment, but one that aligns with God's righteousness, right? It, 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 it it is the high point of his plan to bring justice and restoration to a broken world. In context, the hour of judgment serves as a reminder of God's commitment to, uh, you know, to, to right the wrongs and bring about a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells in 2 Peter 3.13. And the call to worship the creator echoes the sentiment of Psalm 95.6, where it says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. You know, recognizing God as our maker of heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of waters is an acknowledgement of his sovereignty over the entire cosmos and universe, right? It, it invites us to see uh, God not only as the creator of the vast, awe-inspiring universe, but also the one who sustains it. So we get, we, we have, we, we just can't look at God as just, oh, he's the creator, but he also sustains it. He sustains the universe. He sustains creation, right? So the proclamation in Revelation 14 verses six uh, and seven it, it is not a demand of servitude, but an invitation to respond to the grace of, and love of God. It calls us to align our lives with the reality of his lordship, recognizing that in doing so, we find purpose and fulfillment in eternal hope, right? Hold on a minute. There we go. I got to Oh, crap. There we go. All right. 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 In, in our everyday lives, right? I mean, Let's put it this way. It calls us to align our lives with the reality of his lordship, recognizing in doing so we find purpose, fulfillment, and eternal hope, right? In our everyday lives, what does it mean to live out the proclamation of the everlasting gospel? It begins with acknowledging the sovereignty of God in our personal lives, right? It means recognizing that God is not just a distant deity, but an ever-present creator who cares about our well-being. 
this understanding should should lead us to, to seek a relationship with him grounded in love, trust, and devotion, right? You know, living out the gospel also involves, you know, being good stewards of this earth, recognizing God as the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and this, the, the sea and the springs of water reminds us of our responsibility to care for his creation. You know, we're called to be custodians of the environment, assuring the future of generations can also enjoy the beauty and the abundance of God's handiwork. Now, I'm not talking about global warming, so don't get it twisted. I'm not a liberal, okay? Just not. So I'm just talking about caring for what is here. You know what I mean? That's all I'm talking about. Don't get it twisted. Some of you people just, oh, he's a liberal. He's this, he's that, and I'm not a liberal. I have friends that are liberals, but I'm not a liberal. Anyway, so the proclamation encourages us to share the message of the gospel with others. You know, just the angel carried the message to every nation and tribe and language and people. We are called to be messengers of hope to our neighbors, our friends, even strangers. You know, our lives should reflect the gospel's life-changing power and drawing others into a relationship with the creator, with God, right? So Revelation 14 verses 6 and 7 is a profound reminder or is actually a reminder of the eternal and universal nature of the gospel, right? It calls us to acknowledge God's sovereignty, respond to his grace, and live lives as faithful stewards of his creation. Ultimately, you know, the proclamation is an invitation to a life of worship, devotion, and hope, an invitation to extend to all, regardless of nation, tribe, language, or people. May we embrace this everlasting gospel and allow it to shape our lives in a profound and, and meaningful ways. So in Revelation 14, 8, we see a vivid tapestry uh, 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 we see, actually, we see the fall of Babylon it is, it is and, and the momentous event with the, with, with the implications. Revelation 14, 8 unveils this event, right? It, within this symbolism lies a message of hope and warning for all who seek to understand the divine plan. It says this, another angel, a second followed saying, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great who has made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. And that's what we're seeing today. We're seeing that in our kids. We're seeing that in our adults. You know what I mean? And, and we're just seeing that today, guys. We're seeing all that. Before we dive into the implications of, ba of, of, of Babylon's fall, it's crucial to grasp the symbolic nature of Babylon in, in Revelation, right? While Babylon is a historic city in context, it represents a spiritual and moral Babylon, right? A system opposed to God's kingdom. Babylon embodies the worldly seductions of idolatry and moral decay. It attempts, it tempts people to indulge in sinful pleasures, distractions, leading them from a relationship with God, right? And in Revelation 14, 8, we witness the proclamation of Babylon's fall by the second angel. You know, this declaration signifies a pivotal moment in the cosmic struggle between good and evil. Babylon's fall is a triumphant moment of divine justice, a moment when the allure of worldly temptations and spiritual oppressions that they represent are finally defeated, right? You know, the fall of Babylon carries, you know, moral and spiritual implication for believers today. Babylon's fall, you know, uh, 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 reminds us that righteousness and goodness will ultimately triumph over evil. No matter how powerful or alluring the forces of darkness may seem, they will not endure. The light of God's truth will dispel the shadows of deception and immorality. Babylon's allure is, is temptation that, that compromises our faith and values for, 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 for fleeting pleasures of this world, right? It, its fall serves as a wake-up call, urging us to pursue holiness and righteousness in our lives. 
we are reminded that our true identity lies in Christ and him crucified. And we must resist all seductive pull of, of Babylon's values. Babylon's fall is an invitation to repentance, right? And, and turning away from sinful behaviors, right? Just as Babylon leads to nations to drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, we are called to forsake all sinful habit, habits and inclination that will hinder our relationship with God. That means a lot. You know what I mean? I mean, that that's a wide range of things, guys. And I'm just going to tell you right now that we are to forsake sinful habits and inclinations, right? In a world saturated with Babylon uh, influences, the fall of Babylon encourages us to live a counter counterculturally, right? It calls us to be distinct and holy people, shining lights in the darkness. We are called to reject conformity of the world values and instead be transformed by the renewing of your minds in Romans 12 2. You know, hope of restoration, you know, that, that's what we have, right? That the fall of Babylon holds a promise of restoration. That it, it, it foreshadows a future where God's kingdom will reign in all of its glory. It, and in, in that restored world, there will be no more suffering, sin, uh, or temptation. You know, this, this hope sustains us in our earthly journey, reminding us that our struggles here are just temporary. You know, how can we apply uh, the implications of Babylon's falls in our lives? First, we must prioritize our relationship with God above all else, right? We must put God first. We become less successful to the lure of Babylon's values. And protectively guard your heart and minds against the influences of Babylon. Engage in spiritual disciplines. Immerse yourself in scripture and seek accountability in your faith community. You know, in three, counter Babylon by engaging in acts of love and service. By demonstrating Christ's love to others. We combat selfishness and immorality that Babylon presents. And, and four, you know, prayer is a lifetime in battle against Babylon, guys, right? Pray for strength to resist temptation and discernment to recognize the subtle ways in which Babylon tries to ensnare you, right? Uh, sorry about that. People are hitting me up on Facebook. Kind of weird. Anyway, um, you know, Revelation 14, 8 presents us with the fall of Babylon, right? It, it's a momentous event with, 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 with profound moral and spiritual implication. It reminds us of the victory of righteousness over evil. It calls us to holiness and invites us to turn away from sinful behaviors. It encourages us to live counterculturally, holding on to the hope of restoration in God's kingdom. As we navigate the challenges of, of our world, we, we heed the message of Babylon's fall and stand firm in our faith, anchored in the unfailing grace and the truth of Jesus Christ. You know, in the pages of the book of Revelation, we encounter a vivid and often ig uh, 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 in, I can't ever say that word it's so hard. Uh, in, in, enmatic imagery, like none more than sobering of the warning against worshiping the beast, right? You know, uh, Revelation 14, 9 verses, uh, verses 9 through 11 presents us with a solemn message that carries significant spiritual implication for those who seek to understand and heed it right it says this let me start at verse 9 go to 11 it says and another angel a third follow them saying with a loud voice if anyone worships the beast and its image and receives the mark on its forehead or his hand he will also drink the wine of uh the wine of god's wrath poured poured full strength into the cup of his anger and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of torment goes up 
uh, forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night. These worshipers of the beast and its image and who also receives the mark of its name. So to appreciate the gravity of this warning, we must first grasp the symbolism of the beast, right? And its image in Revelation. The beast represents a malevolent and oppressive power that stands in opposition to God's kingdom. It embodies it embodies the, the allure of worldly authority, the seduction of idolatry, and the moral uh, 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 degradation that often accompanies such power, right? The image of the beast signifies, you know, the embodying of, of its values and principles in a tangible form, right? It, it represents systems, ideology, institutions that mirror the destructive nature of the beast itself. You know, in essence, that the image uh, is is a manifestation of the beast's influence in the world. You know, that the, the, the warning in Revelation 14 verses 9 through 11 is, is, is crystal clear. If anyone worships the beast and its image, right? Worship in context goes beyond ritual or ceremony. It signifies allegiance, devotion, and prioritization of the values and principles represented by the beast and the image over God's truth and righteousness, right? Those who choose to worship the beast, right? And its image are described as drinking the wine of God's wrath. This is a metaphorical language that conveys the idea of experiencing the full measure of righteous anger, right? It, it underscores the seriousness of aligning oneself with the forces that oppose God's kingdom. The consequences of such wor uh, of worship are described as torment with fire and sulfur, right? This imagery invokes, you know, a sense of, of suffering and anguish. You know, it, it's essential to recognize that it is not physical suffering, but a, 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 a but, but, but a, 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 a depiction of spiritual anguish experienced by those who rejected God's grace and chosen a path of rebellion. The, the torment described, you know, as, as taking place in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb, right? That this underscores the, the solemnity and, and visibility of the judge of the judgment, right? It's a stark reminder that our actions, including our choices in matters of fit and worship, have consequences that extend beyond the earthly realm. You know, the, the warning emphasizes that the eternal nature of these consequences, right? That the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, indicating that there will be no end to the separation from God. This is a sobering reminder that our decisions in this, in this life have eternal implications. So what should we glean or what should we take from this warning against worshiping the beast? Right? One, we, we, we must exercise discernment in our lives. Being vigilant not to willingly let, align ourselves with ideology systems or powers that oppose God's truth and righteousness. Discernment involves evaluating uh, evaluating the values and principles that guide our choices and actions. And two, the warning underscores the importance of our unwavering faithfulness of, to God. Now, it, it's a reminder. Uh, it, it, it's it's a, it reminds us that in the face of worldly allurements. We must remain steadfast in our commitment to God's kingdom, right? Even when it requires sacrifice and standing against a prevailing culture, right? And three, ultimately, you know, Revelation 14 verses 9 through 11 reminds us of the power of choice. Like we have the freedom to choose where we place our allegiance in Revelation. You know, while while the conse the consequences of choosing the path of the beast, beast are severe, the grace of God extends an invitation to turn away from darkness and embrace the light of his truth. Right? So important, guys. You know, uh, Revelation 14 verses 9 through 11 serves as a warning against worshiping the beast and its image. 
You know, it's a lure to exercise discernment, remain faithful to God and recognize the eternal consequences of our choices. While the imagery is sobering, right? It's also reminds us of the credible grace and mercy of God who offers us the opportunity to turn away from the path of destruction and embrace an abundant life found only in Jesus Christ, right? May, may we heed this warning and choose to follow the way of truth and righteousness, aligning our hearts with the one who offers us eternal hope and salvation. Amen. All right. In the midst of this uh, uh, apocalyptic vision and warning found in the book of Revelation, there, there emerges a message of hope and assurance for those who remain faithful to God. In Revelation 14 verses uh, 12 and 13 unveils this blessing, painting a vivid picture of God's favor upon those who preserve in their faith. And here it says in verse 12, here is the call for endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus, right? So the opening words of this passage declare, here is a call for endurance of the saints. This call of endurance is, is a recognition that the path of faith is not always easy or free from trials, right? It acknowledges that faith, uh, that the faithful will face challenges, temptation, and adversity, right? Yet in the midst of these difficulties, God calls his people to remain steadfast in their commitment to him, right? You know, that the blessing of, 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 uh, uh, of the faithful, right, is specifically bestowed on those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. You know, this combination of obedience to God's commandments is un and, and unwavering faith in Jesus Christ reflects the essence of genuine Christian discipleship, right? You know, uh, uh, keeping God's commandments are an expression of love and devotion to him. It signifies a willingness to align one life, uh, one's life with the divine will and moral principles and found in scripture. You know, that, that it, this obedience is, is not, a, you know, driven by a legalism, but by a heart transformed by the God's loving grace. Right. So faith, faith in Jesus is the cornerstone of our Christian journey. Right. It's unwavering trust and belief in him as Lord and Savior. The faith acknowledges Christ's redemptive work on the cross and relies on his grace for salvation. Like it, it's a it's, it is a dynamic and living relationship with the son of God. Right. You know, uh, uh, so Revelation at 14, 13 continues with the promise of blessing for the faithful right it says this i heard a voice from heaven saying write this blessed are the dead who die in the lord from now on blessed indeed says the spirit that may that they may rest from their labors and their deeds follow them right so so in this declaration you know speaks of uh, of, of hope Right, and assurance that believers have in, in, in the face of physical death, right? Those who have lived their lives in faithful obedience to God's commandments and unwavering faith in Jesus Christ are blessed even in death, right? Their souls find peace and rest in the Lord's presence, right? The imagery of, of rest for their labor signifies uh, a relief from the struggles and toils of this world, right? It re represents the 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 secession of earthly burdens right including suffering persecution and the weight of sin right it, in in the embrace of, of the gospel's eternal presence right the faithful find rest that transcends any earthly comfort and the final part of this blessing emphasizes that deeds of the faithful right continue to bear fruit even after their physical bodies have ended Right, that the impact of their obedience, love, and service extends in eternity. Their legacy of faith and good works endures, influencing and inspiring future generations. Right, you know, uh, uh, and how should that the faithful respond in response of the blessing in Revelation fourteen verses thirteen and and twelve and thirteen? 
right? The call to the endurance reminds us that faith is, is a marathon, not a sprint, right? The faithful are encouraged to preserve, uh, pre pre persevere through trials and challenges, holding fast to their trust in Jesus Christ. The blessing of the faithful tries to, is tied to, to both obedience to God's commandment and faith in Jesus Christ. This underscores the importance of holistic Christian life that integrates faithful obedience with a deep abiding relationship with Christ. And for believers, the promise of a blessed rest and the hope uh, in the Lord offers hope and comfort, you know, in the face of, of, of mortality, you know, it, it assures us that in our ultimate destination, in this pre in the presence of God where we'll find eternal peace and rest you know the awareness that leads the, the awareness that our deeds will follow us serves as a reminder of the enduring impact of a faithful life right it inspires us to live in such a way that our actions and choices reflect the love and grace of God leaving a everlasting legacy for generations to come you know, Revelation 14 verses 12 and 13 represents, you know, a message of hope and blessing for the faithful, right? It calls believers to endure in their faith, obey God's commandments and maintain the unwavering trust in Jesus Christ. This endurance leads to the blessed rest in the Lord where the faithful will find eternal peace and their deeds continue to bear fruit. Right. As as we journey in the in faith, may we take heart in the promise and strive to live lives that reflect the enduring grace of our love and savior Jesus Christ. You know, in, in the book of Revelation, with its apocalyptic visions and, and messages, offers both a warning and promise to those who engage with the sacred text. You know, throughout our exploration of Revelation 14, we've encountered a rich tapestry of themes offering valuable insights for our spiritual journey. First, we dived in the proclamation of the everlasting gospel in verses six and seven of uh, chapter 14. <laughs> this eternal message reminds us of the universal nature of the gospel, transcending boundaries and times and languages and cultures. You know, it's a call. It calls us to worship the creator and turn away from the worldly distractions and anchoring our lives in the sovereignty of God and the sovereignty of God's grace. You know, next we explore the fall of Babylon Lon, and its implications, right? In verses 8, 14, 8 in Revelation. You know, Babylon symbolizes the allure of worldly powers and values that lead us away from God. Right. I, you know, it signifies the, the triumph of righteousness over evils, challenging us to live counterculture and prioritize God's truth above all else. Right. <clears throat> in the warning and in the warning against the uh, worshiping the beast in, in, in Revelation 14, 9 through 11, we encounter a solemn message about the consequences choosing, you know, worldly allegiance over God. You know what I mean? That this warning underscores the eternal nature of our choices and calls to discernment, faithfulness, and steadfast commitment to God's kingdom. And finally, we discover the blessings of the faithful in, in, in verses uh, 11 through, uh, excuse me, 12 to 13. You know, and this passage assures that endurance and faith coupled with the obedience of God's commandments and one wavering trust in Jesus Christ leads us to the blessed rest of our Lord's presence. It highlights the enduring impact of, of faithful life and encourages us to live in a way that reflects God's grace. You know, as we reflect on these passages uh, and the broader themes of Revelation, several key passages emerge, right? Revelation vividly portrays a cosmic battle between good and evil, evil, right? It, 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 it reminds us that the struggle between God's, between the value of God's kingdom and the allure of the world is an essential aspect of our faithful journey. You know, throughout Revelation 14, we're repeatedly called to faithfulness. This faithfulness encompasses obedience to the God's commandments 
devotion to Christ and unwavering trust in God's sovereignty. While Revelation contains warning and divisions and judgment, it also offers a, a, a message of hope, right? The faithful are assured of God's presence, blessing, and eternal rest. This hope sustains us through the trials and tribulations of life. The message of Revelation challenges us to live counterculturally, resisting the worldly temptations that can lead us astray, right? We are called to be distinct holy people, reflecting God's love and grace in a world marred with sin and injustice, right? Revelation underscores the significance of our choices, right? We have the freedom to choose from uh, whom we will serve, you know, and our decisions have eternal consequences. It's a reminder of the gravity of our choices and the responsibility to make to make them wisely. And above all, Revelation emphasizes the sovereignty of God, right? Even in the midst of the chaos and uncertainty, God remains in control. His plan for redemption and restoration will ultimately prevail. In our spiritual journey, let us draw strength from the message of Revelation, understanding that while we may face trials and challenges, you know, we do so with assurance of God's presence and the hope of eternal blessings. You know, may we be inspired to live lives of faithfulness, obedience, and unwavering trust in, in, in our creator and savior, Jesus Christ. In this journey, may we find hope, not, you know, may we find not only warnings, but the promises of everlasting glorious future in the presence of our loving God. You know, we, we want to look at, you know, the book of Revelation being scary and stuff like that. And, and you know what it is? It is scary, you know, but there's a message of hope in there, man, because we're, we're, we're called to endure. We're called to live holy. We're called to be ob in obedience. Making sure that you're making the right choices and you're discerning what needs to be done godly in a godly way, not just, you know, hey, I'm just going to make this decision right here because this is what my brain tells me. No, taking that big decision before God and say, God, I need you. I need you to help me make this decision. You know, can, can, can you, you know, can you show me, you know, or, or can you let me know? You know what I mean? And that's what it's about. You know, um, and if we if we're not in line with God, we're not, you know, if we don't believe in, in, in the power of Jesus, we're not being obedient, you know, why we're here on this earth, that's going to that you're going to succumb to 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 that sulfur and fire. And that's just the, the, the thing. But guys, we have hope. We have time right now. Right. To get our lives right with God you know, and, and, and confess our sins to one another and be in community and loving one another. That's what it's about, guys. It's not about what can I get from you? It's about what can I do for you and how can I serve you and how can I love you and how can I help you? That's what it's about today. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time, Lord. And we just ask God that you just do a mighty work in us, God. You know, create a, a like, like the words of, of King David, Create a, a, a clean heart within me, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me, Lord. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me, right? You know, and let us be, be ambassadors of you, loving people and serving others in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I uh, hope you guys have are enjoying this journey. I'll be on tomorrow uh, with another segment, but this, I'm glad that you guys are here. We're on all the podcasting platforms um, you know, we're on, uh, Spotify, we're on Google podcast, Amazon music, Stitcher, Castbox, tune in, iHeartRadio, you know, and so, so thank you guys for being here and may God richly bless you. We are praying for you. Amen. Heavenly father, thank you for all that you do in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you guys. You guys have a great day. We will see you tomorrow.